Fish in a Tree, Chapters 40 to 42. Chapter 40. Tears of Different Kinds. Keisha and Albert call me Madam President every chance they get. At the end of the day, we head out to the front of the school and I am just so happy. Like I could fly happy. A loud, sharp voice interrupts my happiness. What do you mean you lost? You lost? Shay is standing with her mother. After all that time we spent writing that speech, she says, did you look at the audience? Did you speak up and smile? I did. I did all of that. The other girls just got more votes. The other girl just got more votes. Shay sounds like someone completely different. The Shay I know, always so quick to pick a fight, now has a voice that sounds like a kindergartner. Sorry, Mama. She brushes a tear from her cheek. Man, Keisha says, that woman is fierce. Geez, I can't believe it, but I feel sorry for Shay, I say. Uh-uh, no way, Keisha says. Don't be feeling sorry for her. It's not an excuse to go around doing terrible things to other people. Yeah, I guess you're right. Have you learned nothing, she asks. Of course I'm right. We laugh, and she gets on her bus. All of a sudden, I'm in a rush to get to A.C. Peterson's. Running through the glass door at Peterson's, I forget that I was going to be cool about telling my mom that I'm class president. I forget about telling her that, like it's any other thing. Instead, I jump up and down, say it loud enough that some of the regulars congratulate me before she does. Her face says she's trying to figure out if she heard me right. Yes, I say, nodding ferociously. Mom, they voted me class president. The kids in my class, not the teacher, the kids did. She holds her arms out and I run into them. I'm so proud of you, she says in a shaky voice. I know why she's crying. I can't believe it either. Chapter 41 Not So Secret Letter In that foggy time between sleeping and being awake, before I open my eyes, I already remember that I am class president. I asked myself if it was a dream, knowing that it wasn't. Knowing by the way it feels like my insides are rising into the air even before I sit up. It's like when you wake up on Christmas morning and remember what day it is. I lie there thinking that I'm happy Mr. Daniels counted the votes in front of everyone. I don't think I would have believed him if he said I'd won later. When I get to school, everyone acts the same, but I feel different. I put my stuff away and head to my desk, where I find an envelope with my name on the front. Weird. I sit down and slide it off my desk, glancing around. I pull a piece of paper from the envelope. I expect it will be a note from Mr. Daniels congratulating me, but it's not. It's full. It's a full page of cursive writing. I recognize some of the words, like love, but I don't know what most of it says. The name at the bottom is Max. I look over at him and he nods once. I look away feeling like my face must be glowing like Rudolph's nose. I fold up the letter and slide it into my pocket, wishing I could read it. I think that when I get home, I can study it and maybe figure it out, but I can't stare at it now. I look over at Keisha, who is putting her things in, her, in the closet. Hey, she says, sitting down. Hey, my mouth opens to tell her about the note, but she's not the best person at being quiet about things, and I'm afraid everyone will find out about it. So I take a deep breath and decide it will have to wait. I don't have a choice. I'm both happy and mad at myself. Happy about the note and mad that I can't read it. Max is cute, and I like the red and white football jerseys that he wears all the time. And now I think he likes me. I think I might like him, too. So how does it feel to be president, Keisha smiles. Oh, yeah, man. This may be the best week of my entire life. Same old stuff, I say. Huh? Same old stuff? Already gone to your head? Don't worry, I'll still talk to you and everything. Like you like you could ever ignore me, we both laugh. Okay, my fantasticos, Mr. Daniels begins. He reminds us to put our homework in the basket and gets the class helpers working on lunch counts and stuff. And I sit up straighter, feeling like I have a place in this class. After Mr. Daniels finishes with the bo the boring morning stuff, he says, One more thing. Our new class president, Allie Nickerson, has the first has her first student government meeting today. So if you have any suggestions for her, please let her know. If you have any ideas for changes, she's the one in charge. I know that I shouldn't smile, but keeping my mouth from smiling is like trying to keep Travis from loving cars. The first suggestion I get is from Oliver. I'm trying to do my work and he stands in front of my desk. I have a suggestion. Okay, what is it? I think we should be able to bring candy for snacks, like piles of it, like dump trucks backing up to the school with the warning beeper going, and then it would dump like a huge pile of candy in front of the school and the kids could use shovels to collect it. Because that rule they made this year about healthy snacks is dumb and they took away about the only thing about, the only thing about school I liked and 
Oliver, Mr. Interrupt, Mr. Daniels interrupts. He looks up. You have a question? I'm giving advice to the president. I have an idea. He half smiles. Okay, then we'll finish up and get back to your seat. Oliver looks back at me. Okay, can you do that? I'll try. He looks disappointed. Suki interrupts. I disagree. The healthier snack rule was good. It is bad for your body to fill with candy. He looks over at her. Stop acting like you're a grown-up. Jeez. Other kids give me suggestions, too. Just before lunch, I hear Shay complaining that if she'd been elected, she'd have started a horseback riding club at school. For a second, I feel bad, and then I realize she couldn't possibly do that. Horses? Where would, they, where would we get horses? I think about starting a Fly to the Moon every Thursday club. A mind movie plays in my head of a silver rock with blue stripes flying the moon with Keisha, Albert, and me strapped in. Albert calmly explains the energy required to lift the rocket. Keisha is screaming. She's so happy. And I'm laughing because I'm happy they're happy. I'm pulled out of my movie by Shay, who's standing in front of me. Everyone agrees you should go crawl into a hole and never come out. Since I won the election, I guess not everyone feels that way. And I'm surprised that instead of just saying something back to me, she just stomps off. At the end of the day, we are getting ready to board the buses. Shay tromps up to me with her shadow, Jessica, right behind her. So did you get that letter? Why is she asking me about that? A little voice in my head warns me. What letter? Shay glances behind her and turns back. You know, the letter. What are you talking about, I ask. She is impatient. The letter? She drops her voice to whisper. From Max saying you should meet him for lunch? You never showed. He's really disappointed. Oh, he is? She glances behind herself. So, do you like him? Why do you want to see me at lunch? Allie, you can't just ignore something like that. It's rude. I see Max coming, but I don't say anything. She continues. He really likes you, so you should be. So you should answer Max's letter, and say the thing in it that he says to you. Okay, will you tomorrow? What letter? He asks. Max. Oh, hi. She says, stumbling over her words. What letter? You said my name. I never thought I'd see Shay unable to talk. Actually, I say, the love letter Shay says you wrote to me. I hand it to him. Thanks very much, but I'm busy. Um, wait, I never, I didn't actually, he says to me, trying to be nice. Then he looks at the letter and it's Shay and Jessica, and he doesn't look so nice. Jessica turns pale, but not as pale as Shay does. Whatever was going to happen at the lunch table is something I'm lucky to have missed. It's the first time ever I've been grateful not to be able to read. Chapter 42 The Gifts of No Excuses, Scotch Tape, and Antibiotics Mr. Daniels calls me up to his desk. Here, I have something for you. I'm excited, until I see it's a book. Not like I hate them like I used to, but they still scare me. I stare at it, hoping he just wants me to book talk it, not actually read it. I'd like you to read this. I open my mouth to speak, my mind already rolling out multiple excuses. He puts his hand up. Listen, Allie, I know it won't be easy. I know it will take time, but the thing is... My excuses become harder to say. I think you can read this one, and I want you to try. I reach out and take the book. It has a picture of a kid holding a goldfish bowl. I flip through the pages. This book isn't long as far as chapter books go. That's a relief. I look up at him and hold his gaze. Normally, I'd be giving him all kinds of reasons I can't do this, but the thing is, Mr. Daniels could hand me a book as heavy as a boulder, and I'd try to read it, just because he asked me to. Okay, we are going to begin a unit on persuasive writing, Mr. Daniels says, so I'd like you to tell me if you could come if you could have an unlimited amount of any single object what would it be can't be magical have special powers or anything like that just ordinary every type of everyday type of object well obviously shay speaks slowly like she's talking to a little kid wouldn't everyone just choose money albert looks confused not something i see too often the first thing i thought of was antibiotics really mr daniel steps forward putting his hands in his pockets there are many who can't afford medication, so I would like to give them out to people who need them all over the world. Then he seems to be thinking out loud. I wonder if antibiotics would help or hurt alien life forms. Well, Shay sputters, if you had an unlimited amount of money, you could just buy the medicine, right? I catch her rolling her eyes at Jessica. He shrugs. I'd rather just have the medicine. Scotch tape, Oliver yells. I'd want scotch tape. Most of us laugh along with him. And why is that, Oliver? Mr. Daniels asks. Because it's awesome, that's why. People don't think how tough life would be without scotch tape. Mr. Daniels nods. You have a point there, Oliver. Or Elmer's glue. I love Elmer's glue. If I had barrels of it stored up in the garage, I could cover my hands with it every day and then peel it off. I love doing that. And it grosses out my mom. I tell her it's skin. Shay makes a noise. What? 
Oliver asks her. That's ridiculous, she says. What's ridiculous, he asks. The opinions of others are to be respected, Mr. Daniel says, but Shay and Oliver talk right over him. Wanting tape and glue, she says. No, it isn't, because I would also use them with paper to make notes for my little sister. They make her feel better. Make her feel better? Mr. Daniel seems concerned. Is she ill? Oh, not anymore, but she had something that was called, well, it was long. It had five syllables, and she had to go to the hospital a lot to sleep over. And when she'd go, I'd visit her and bring cards, and they made her happy. My mom says I am the one who helped her to get better. I see. Well, Oliver, I get huge creativity points today. Oliver, you get huge creativity points today. Mr. Daniel musses his hair. You're one of a kind. You know that, Oliver? Suki raises her hand. Grandfather says everyone is unique, special, unlike all others. That makes each of us great. I like that, Suki, Mr. Daniel says, and you are indeed great. She remains seated but bows a bit. Thank you, sir. Mr. Daniels bows back and then stands up straight. In fact, you're all great, my fantastic fantasticos. Albert raises his hand and Mr. Daniels nods toward him. Excuse me, but just because something is unique, that doesn't mean it's good. After all, E. coli are dangerous bacteria is unlike all others. Point taken, Albert. But I do like that all people are different. What if we all looked the same, thought the same, and had the same beliefs? That sounds boring, Keisha says. Indeed it does, he says. I think I wouldn't mind being more like everybody else, everyone else, but then I think I wouldn't want to draw, draw like everyone else, and I wouldn't want to act like Shay or Jessica. All of a sudden, there is screaming. It's Oliver. Ant murderer! Ant murderer! What is it, Oliver? Mr. Daniels asks. He points at Shay. Ant murderer! All I did was step on a dumb ant. What is he so freaked out about? You had no right to kill him. He was just walking by. You think it was a him? It's just a dumb ant. Who cares? I care, Oliver says, getting down on all fours with a tissue to check on the ant, which is clearly dead. He cleans it up with a tissue and slips it into his pocket. You're going to keep it? She sputters. Well, I'm not just going to throw him in the garbage. I'll bury him at home. She begins to laugh. Shay, Mr. Daniels says. There will be none of that. She stops. We are all different. You care about some things and Oliver cares about others. We have to work to accept each other, even though we may not agree. Yeah, Oliver yells. And Oliver, Mr. Daniels says, I think you have to cut Shay a break here. It's pretty common for people to step on ants. So? Oliver? He asks and waits. Oliver turns to Shay mumbles, sorry, and climbs back into his seat. Thank you, Oliver. Mr. Daniels wanders over to Oliver's desk. I'm glad you apologize. Now that you have, he leans over and rests his hands on his knees. I'd like to add that you have one of the kindest hearts I know. You care so much about everything, always looking out for others. And that, my fine young fellow, is going to make for a great man someday.